Hey, guys, it's your girl, Latonya Moore, here on Real Perspectives, and we have Mr. Joe Martin, who is the founder and creator of Real Men Connect. Real Men Connect is an online mentoring and discipleship community for Christian men where they, they, they help good men become great men God's way, and they provide real answers to real problems in the real world, and they're on Real Perspectives. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you, Latanya. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about who you are. Well, I, I'll give you a short version because I know you'll um, unpack all the rest. <laughs> um, I, when I'm on planes, I travel quite frequently, and people ask me, what do I do for a living? I, I hate just telling them my occupation. I tell them I'm a professional, highly skilled um, man builder. <laughs> I, say, I, get, I say I get paid to build men for a living. And that's my call, that's my purpose, um, and that's what I do. So I help, like you said in the, um, in the intro, I help good men become great men God's way. And I do that by giving them real answers to real problems in the real world and getting them connected, and that's the key word, is connected, to um, strong men of faith who are strong husbands, great leaders, um, awesome dads, and make sure they can never use the excuse, I did not know how to do it. Awesome. That's really great. I love that, that term, man builder, because I think that, that those of us who, I'm, I'm Christian, uh, I certainly believe in, in God, I believe in the kingdom, you know, to the day I die. So it, it, I don't have a problem putting that out there. But, but I think that, that in general, uh, those of us that, that do understand kingdom principles, we understand that we are people builders. But specifically, right. I've been saying for a long time, probably about 10 years now, that there has been a gross disregard for boys and they're growing up to be stunted as men. Do you find that to be something that you, that you experience as part of your Real Men Connect community? Absolutely. Matter of fact, Latanya, that's actually why um, God has put this on my heart and inspired me to do this. My background is in education. Um, I've been in education, and I say in education, I've been a professor, been a high school teacher, elementary school teacher, and I train and I consult all over the country. That's why I travel so much. I actually work with school districts all over the country, probably been at least 750 school districts. And I just did some training here in my own city here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, on yesterday. And typically, you know that in the school system, predominantly there's about, I would say, 75% are females who are teaching in the classroom. So me being a male, I get asked to, to come in and help turn, turn schools around, a lot of inner city schools as well. And the question I get constantly asked is, Joe, what can we do to help our boys? What can we do to help our, our little girls here? Um, these kids are becoming more violent. They're becoming more angry. They're, getting, um, they're becoming less um, respectful and that type of thing. And so while they're asking me these questions, I tell them, I said, well, the real answer is not going to be in the education system. I said, it's going to start in the home. And it's going to start with um, fixing the family because, as we know, that if you fix the family, starting with the man, um, you fix that marriage, um, you fix that neighborhood, that community, and it turns everything around. And, Latanya, I know that you have probably have a lot of female listeners out there, and I know they may even get upset when I say this, but um, we, we, cannot do, we cannot turn this thing around in our country. I'm, you look at almost every problem that we have in society. You cannot turn this country around without fixing the man first. And so I've been, I spent over 20 years in education, and I've won every award imaginable as a teacher, as a speaker, as a consultant, as an author. And I'm telling you right now, from an expert point of view, I've been, pretty much I've been wasting my time in education. I should have been starting with the man in the beginning. Awesome. I love it because, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have somebody else, first of all, that, that's far more advanced in, in this, who can really just say, no, this is, this is really true, because I can, I can clearly remember. I was a single parent of a, of a boy who's now a man, and mm -hmm. I remember he was probably maybe seven or eight, possibly nine. I know he, he was no older than nine years old, and I remember having a very heavy conversation with him where I said to him, listen, there are going to be some things that I can't teach you. I'm not a man. I don't know how to be a man. I can't teach you to be a man. But what I can teach you is to be the best person that you can be so that right. as you get older, there may unfortunately be some things that you, that you don't know or don't know how to do that that male counterpart, if his father was more active, 
would have been things that he would have just learned because it's a nat- they're natural things that men do. And um, I-, I bring that up because now that he's an adult, we've had the, the follow-up conversation where we clearly identified a lot of those things. Um, and so how, how do you, your organization, how, do you, how does your organization deal with situations where you now have a, a grown man who's coming seeking help because they realize, okay, I was in this single parent situation, so, you know, not making excuses, but I need to know what do I need to do as a man? Okay, I'm gonna give you now. I'm gonna give you a long version because just also kind of share with your listeners a little bit about my background. Um, I'm the product of a single mom. Um, my mom was 16 years old when she had me, so she was a teenager, and she had my sister at 17. And my dad left when I was two, and so we were, I was raised without a man. And I grew up in the projects in Miami, and I don't know if your listeners are familiar with the place called Liberty City, but if they've ever heard of the Grand Theft Auto, the video game, they did a video game based on our city. And I grew up in a community where there were hundreds and hundreds of males, but not one man. And let me say that again, okay? Hundreds and hundreds of males, but not one man. And the reason why I say that, they say, how is that possible? You had all these males in your community. I said, because you're a, a male by birth, but you're a man by choice. And I saw all these males who were grown, I mean, adults, who talked about their children, but I never saw them with their children. And so here we are aimlessly growing up in this environment, in this community, and there was no real male role models. Well, let me say real man role models for us. And so I didn't meet a real man. I didn't become a man, and this is sad to say, Latanya, I didn't become a man until I was 33 years old. Now, let me back up a little bit. I... um. I got out of my community. When I say out of my community, I made it out of the projects. I became the youngest professor ever hired to teach in the state of Florida at age 24. Um, I graduated top of my university class at age 20 early. I was voted student of the year out of 10,000 students on my campus, and I was the only African-American male in all my classes. I had my Ph.D. before I was 30. Um, I moved my mom out of the projects a year after I graduated from college and bought my first home before I graduated from college. So now what your listeners are hearing, they say, wow, Praise the Lord. Look at, man, he came from a single mom household, and he was able to get out of that situation. Yes, I succeeded as a, as a male, Latanya, but I failed as a man. And how did I fail as a man? Because when I got married at 22 years old, I had no clue how to be a husband. Now, my mom did the best she could. Like, she did exactly what you did. I'm going to teach you right from wrong. I'm going to even introduce you to God. But God intended for us to have Pauls in our lives, somebody to show us how to become men. It doesn't necessarily have to be your biological father, but it has to be a man. The great thing about women is you guys can encourage us, and we need that encouragement. You, you encourage your son. But, Latanya, you can't affirm your son as a man. It takes a man to do that. It doesn't have to be his dad. I can affirm your son, but it takes a man to let him know, yes, you are a man. A woman cannot tell him that. A man needs to hear that from a man. And I'll go back to the, to the Bible. Jesus, perfect in every way, in every way imaginable. God, when he got baptized, God said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus didn't need any affirmation. He's, he's God in, in the human flesh. Why did God do that? To give us an example that we have to be affirmed. Girls need to be affirmed. That, that um, ask from a father to say, you know what, you don't have to do all this to get a man. You are worthy. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. She needs to hear that from a man, not just another woman. And so to answer your question, I'm going the long way around this. I got married. I had no idea what I was doing. And we had a pretty good marriage until I ran into problems, didn't know what to do. So my wife became trial and error, and I ended up sabotaging our marriage and ended up after 16 years devastating my son, who I did not know how to be a father to because I wasn't shown how to be a man. So how can I possibly teach him how to be a man? But it wasn't until I was 33 years old and a man stepped into my life who was not my biological father. And here's answering your question. What do we do in our organization? What do I do now to build men? I get them in the presence of real men. This man who stepped into my life has eight children. 
and he was married for 30-something years, and I was invited to come down to speak at his school um, to his kids who were in my, in my na- old neighborhood. Now, I've got to tell you, this man, my spiritual father, is a Caucasian man. So him working in my community, I didn't meet a white child until I was 12. So I was surprised to even see him in my neighborhood. He brings me in to speak to these kids in my community, but he told me he wanted me to um, um, stay at his house with him and his family. And Latanya, I was there for five days, and it changed my life. Because when I was at his house, he did not hit me over the head with a Bible. He didn't invite me to church. He didn't preach the gospel. What he did is he modeled and showed me how he prayed for his children. He let me participate in devotions with his children. When his children were put to bed, he had me come to the table with his wife, and they would um, drink coffee together and talk about her day. And he would talk about his day. And he, made, he and put me into his life, and I got to watch him, how he took his, his three daughters out on dates, how he spoke to his sons privately, and he let me participate. And then when I left after five days, he gave me all of these books and these DVDs and CDs as if he's never going to see me again. He said, Joe, read this. Use this with your son. Joe, I, this helped me when I was married. Do this. And he just helped my hand and said, do this. And I broke down crying, Latanya. I'm a 33-year-old grown man crying in front. He said, why are you crying? I said, I prayed for God to send me a Paul. And I don't know why God waited for 33 years to send you to me, but man, I know you have eight children. Could you adopt one more? And he's been my father now for the last 14 years. And so what do we do? Now, what do I do my organization, Latanya? I recruit Howards. That's what I do. You you won't find him on social media because he's not on social media. He's never written a book. I've written 12 books. He doesn't have a, a huge following. You would never meet him. I know where these men are. I find them. I recruit them. I bring them to Real Men Connect. I interview them, and I get them to share what he shared with me. For, so thousands of men all over the country, all over the world can never say, I don't know what it takes to be a man. Your son can never use the excuse anymore. But my mama was great, but she, shut up. Go to realmenconnect.com. Enough said. Any man you want to meet. Now, understand, he may not be famous, he may not have a million Twitter followers, but I guarantee you his wife loves him to death, and, his women, and, his, and, his, and women respect him, and his children admire and respect him. That's what I do. That, that's really awesome because, you know, I, one thing that, that stuck out when you were saying he's not famous, because I think a lot of times we look to famous people as, as role models. And yes. uh, go, going back, though, to, to something that, that you mentioned I, I wanted to make a point about is when you were saying you were in the schools and they were wondering, you know, well, why are the boys doing this or, or you know, we need this because they're violent and they're this. And something, again, that I have been, I think I have a few gray hairs behind this because I have been screaming this for, from the heels that there has been a lack of respect for children as children. And so what I mean by that is we share very adult situations in front of our children, and we allow them into adult type of spaces. I'm not a fan personally of, like, reality shows. I'm not against it per se, but I do see that it's adult entertainment. Um, right. I know a lot of people that they watch these shows with their, with their very young children, and what they don't understand is that they're literally teaching their children how people interact in relationships, how, and, and not just male-female relationships, but also – um, you know, friendships or, or, or things like that and, and interactions. That's just one part. The music that we listen to, again, some of it has very adult content. It may not be cursing, per se, but it's very adult content. You know, we let our children, we expose our children to very adult situations. And although I'm not necessarily against those things in general, I think that children are being exposed to things a lot faster, but we're, but we're not talking to our children and we're not teaching them anything. And one main thing that we don't teach them is conflict resolution. We don't teach them how to deal with and, and really just squash conflict because drama is the big thing. Have you noticed when you go into the schools, have you noticed, in, well, first of all, what do you think about, about that philosophy that I'm pushing? No, you're absolutely right. You're right on target. Um, and I will say this and add to what you just said, that the reason why they don't know conflict resolution, they're being exposed to all this stuff, and now we don't know how to deal with difficult situations. And this is so important. 
the reason why they don't know and the parents don't know and they're exposed because the parents weren't taught and shown. See, this is, I give a great example my dad. My dad is very successful in the world's eyes. Um, he's very well off financially and everything, which bothers a lot of people because we grew up so poor. And they said, well, your dad didn't help you out. He never paid child support, never did any of that stuff. And my dad and I had, as you can imagine, an estranged relationship because he abandoned us when I was two years old. And so when I started to build a relationship with him, um, when I met him finally, because, and this is the sad part, is that no matter how much um, we get the love from our mother, that boy still has some questions about why did that man leave, and he still wants that affirmation. I can't convince women enough. You guys have no idea how important it is for a man to get affirmation from another man. That's why we, when I say we, I'm using this term very loosely here, why we pursue a lot of women because we try to get validation in other ways. Does that make sense? Yes. And we, we, we want valid. Since we didn't get it from the man we should have gotten it from or from the father, the real father, we want to get it from, oh, man, if I make enough money, if um, I have the right job, if I have enough women, if I get the admiration and followers of all these people, then I'll feel like a man. But let me go back to my dad. So, and this is going, that's why I agree with what you're saying here, is my dad and I, after I met him, I didn't want a relationship with him because I didn't like the kind of man he was. And I was actually kind of thankful that he wasn't in my life early on because it would have messed me up even more. But here's the problem. My, my, I have a half-brother um, who lived with my dad, and he made this statement to me, and it just blew me away. He says, he says you know why you can't get along with dad? I said, I said because he's a, not a good guy. He's not, he says, no, he says, because you keep looking at him as your father. I said, because he is. He said, yeah, but you've got to stop looking at him as your dad. I said, if I don't see him as my dad, how do I supposed to look at him? He said, see, he said, you know how much time you spend with your son, Kendall? I said, yeah. He said, you see how close you guys are? Yeah. You see what you've taught him? Yeah. You see how he comes to you for advice? Yeah. He said, dad never had that. And that's when it hit me. Look at he said, stop looking at him as a grown man you can't like and look at him as a hurting child who needs help. So when you see these schools, what you're saying and what you're seeing manifest manifested, and you see even parents who are not being the right parents, before we crucify those parents, ask yourself, who's your daddy? Who is your daddy? That's when it makes perfect sense to me, Tony. When I see, when I look at it through the lens of who's your dad, then it makes perfect sense. So why are parents allowing their kids to watch reality television? Did your dad, you know, what kind of dad did you have? See, my kids, they may not be perfect. And they may not make a million dollars, but I can guarantee you this. My kids are not going out there robbing anybody, being disrespectful, and they're not going to mistreat people because I'm their daddy. Does that make sense? Yes. Not because I'm great, because I'm a great dad. You show me somebody with a strong male figure in the home, in the home, who is spiritually leading his family, who is washing his wife in the word, covering her, praying with her, praying for her, who is living out his life day by day, telling his kids, be you but do me. Do what you see me do. Speak the way you see me speak. Listen to what you allow, what I allow myself to listen to. This is what I tell my kids. Watch what I allow myself to watch. Speak to people the way you hear me speak to people. Treat women the way you watch me treat women. When I mess up, repent the way I repent, pray the way I pray, seek God the way I see God. You be you, kids, my daughter and my son. Be you, but you do your day. Do exactly what you see me do. So guess what? I don't have to compete against real-life television. I don't have to compete against um, false role models. I don't have to compete against bad school teachers. I don't have to compete against a corrupt government because I'm their dad. I'm their dad. And so when I see these kids, my heart breaks. It just breaks because you know what I want to be? I want to be all their dads. But guess what I realize? I can't do it by myself. So you know what I do? I recruit. I will, right now I can go to Walmart. If I see a dad who is with his daughter or with his son and I see that child respects him, I go up to him, give him my car and say, hey, can I talk to you, brother? I do a, a, a radio show called Real Men Connect podcast. I would love to interview you. And they're just, what? Because they're not celebrities. I'm just in the Walmart with my daughter. What are you talking about? Or if I see a, a, a man on a date with his daughter out in a restaurant, I would go up to him and ask him, man, can I talk to you? Here's my card. 
I recruit great men so they can help other good men become great men God's way. Can I talk to you? And that's what it's going to do to change. It's going to turn this around. We have to start finding the guys who are doing it right and giving them the spotlight so Lil Wayne doesn't always have it. Jay-Z doesn't always have it. Donald Trump doesn't always have it. We've got to start recruiting so our kids can see better examples of real men. I love it. I, I love it. I love it all. That That is so uh, – it, it, it's so key and it's so on point. I do want to ask you um, – it, it's a little bit of a twist, but I think it's, I think it's really significant in the, in the course of, of our conversation. What I've seen, and again, this is more on, on the spiritual side, is that for years, for many, many years, there has been a large-scale attack on men. Because, again, mm-hmm. the natural order of things, you know, God, you know, and being man. So I was having a conversation with, uh, with someone, and I said, you know, it, it's sad, but there has really just been, I don't think people are, are really realizing that a lot of the attacks, from a spiritual standpoint, everything is about the man. You know, if you right. think about it, in, in society, women have been placed, and, and this isn't a gender thing, it's more of a spiritual thing, but women have been placed in a position of power and authority. Uh, women are more authoritative in the home, not that, they, not that they shouldn't assert themselves. You know, certainly I'm no proponent of that. But from a spiritual standpoint, have you noticed that just, just over time or kind of looking back that that has been, been something? If you notice, if you go to any ministry, 70%, probably 60%, it's going to be women. It's a lot right. more women actually in church service uh, than men. Why they're there, you know, it is what it is. You know, there, a lot of people have different philosophies, but just have you, have you noticed that? And what do, you th- what do you think about that? Well, I, I agree with you um, that, the, uh, that church is now, um, it's, it's, they're dominated by women, um, and I don't say it in a negative way, but the reason why is that's the reality uh, of it because the women have had because we've abdicated our position and our God given responsibility as men, women have had to step up and to be authoritative, to be strong. I give you an example of my wife. Um, my first marriage ended because I wasn't a real man. And when I got married again, my wife, let me kind of give you her background, she was a sergeant in the police department. So does that does that kind of give you the idea she's a weak woman? <laughs> you know, she's over <laughs> men. Okay. She's a sergeant in the police department. She's a black belt in karate. She's ex-military. So we're talking about ex-law enforcement and a decorated military, okay? So ex-law enforcement officer, okay, ex-military, black belt in karate, and she trains men on physical. She, she's a physical. She runs a now fitness studio. Now I got her out of the cop thing, thank God. Okay? <laughs> but, so obviously any woman out there listening right now will think, my wife is not weak. My wife can kick my butt, okay? <laughs> my wife is strong. She is um, she's very headstrong. She's very driven, but she's a, she was a single mom when I met her of a daughter, okay? When I met her, my daughter was only five years old. So you can imagine me coming into her life, and now she, she, her dad was a pastor, okay, but she had daddy issues, and her dad was a man of God, but he didn't walk in the word of God. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that turned her away from God. And then she met me after post Howard, my spiritual father. And I even asked her one day, and this is answering your question, and I think this summarizes, puts it in a great nutshell. I said, um, Tanya, I said, I got to tell you. I said, because her name is Tanya as well. <laughs> I said, Tanya, I said, I got to tell you. I said, the only question I, only thing I wondered when I was, um, when I wanted to marry you was, this woman would never submit to me, because she's been taking care of herself and her daughter for all these years without a man, and she can she can do it without a man. She doesn't need my help. She's not gonna listen to my leadership or when I'm going to God in prayer and asking God how to lead our family. She's not gonna listen. Is it, Latanya? It's been total opposite, and to the point that everybody who knows her said. Wow, I've never seen her. Every time you ask her about something, she's like, I'm going to talk to my husband about this. Let me talk to my husband about this. And she told me this, and this, and I want all the women to hear this. She said, Joe, you're right. I know good and well that I can probably beat up 75% of the men out there. <laughs> okay? She said, and Joe, I would never 
have submitted to a man. But, Joe, when I saw you, I wasn't submitting to you. I was submitting to the authority you were submitting to. Mm -hmm. And, Joe, as long as I see Christ over your shoulder, I'll follow you anyway, baby. And so she only submits to me to the degree I submit to the Father. Absolutely. And so we and, have, and, and ooh, that's yes, why I love, I love her it. so. That's why I love her so. <laughs> and so, if, um, it, so that's it. so that's what I say to the women out there is that I understand. No, don't don't give up your don't give your power away. Don't give up your authority until you find a man who submitted to Christ. And even in our household today, we still argue. We have disagreements. And this is how I go to my wife. And Howard has taught me this. I go to Tanya because remember, Tanya's a strong woman. I said, Tanya, I don't agree that we should do that with our family right now. I said, I went to God in prayer, and this is what God spoke to me. Now, this is what I think we should do with our family, and this is the way we should go. Now, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to ask you to go to God in your prayer closet. And if you come in agreement with me, we can do this. Now, if you decide that you don't want to do this anyway, even though I have gone to God in prayer about this, that's between you and God. But I'm going on the record to let you know that I am leading but I am not going to force you to go anywhere. And you know where I get that? My, Howard taught me that, but you know how Howard taught me that? He said, Joe, God doesn't make you do anything. The Holy Spirit leads you and directs you on the way you should go. But then, look, Tanya, we have a choice. Either we're going to obey or what? Disobey. Absolutely. And then, and then he says, okay, now you have to do God doesn't say, I'm going to stop loving you after you disobey. And he said, okay, now live with the consequences of that choice. God gives us a choice, and then he honors the choice. So that's exactly how I lead my family. I said, I have to give them and say, this is what God has told us we need to do. Now, this is the choices. Whatever choice you get, you pick, I'm going to honor that choice, and that's going to be between you and God. But they, that's Absolutely. how I lead my family. So as Absolutely. you can see, that's not a dictatorship. It's not my way or the highway. No, it's God's way. So I, I said, whether you guys going out, I'm going God's direction. Y'all can follow me if you want to. But if you don't, that's between you and God. I'm not going to stop loving you, and I'm not going to throw a tantrum and put my finger in my, in my mouth and, and have a pity party. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to lead by example, and I learned that from Howard. Great advice. Great advice. So tell us a little bit about, uh, besides the Real Men Connect and, and, and the podcast, are there, any, are, are there any other things that you're working on? Yeah, there's a lot of things that work on, but they're all connected to Real Men Connect. Uh, my biggest um, desire is to how do I expand the reach of Real Men Connect? And a lot of things I do, in addition to the podcast, which we now, I mean, it's now become rated the top podcast for Christian men on iTunes, and we've only been, um, I guess we've only been on the air for like two and a half months. Just amazing. God's shown us a tremendous favor. And we get a lot of traffic to our blog and, and everything else. But what I'm doing now is a lot of local initiatives as well. And, and let me tell you what I mean by local initiatives. I'm doing things locally that I want to see mimic nationally. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, things we do locally, like I'll give you an example. Um, I, I, I put together a group called Brothers Keepers, Brothers Keepers. And these are a group of men who um, have, that they come, we meet every Saturday, once a week, every Saturday, and we either meet at my wife's studio downtown or we meet here at my home. And what we do is we come together, we deal with our issues, and then what I do is they are responsible for picking three guys, each man. And we range in age from, we have guys that my son even comes to us. So we got guys as young as 17 up to 83 come here. And they each have to pick three men, and they can be any, of any age, three guys who God is pressing on their spirit to get connected to. And their job is to pick those three guys, stick with those three guys, invite those three guys to do life-on-life -life discipleship with them, not, we're not talking about inviting them to church. We're not talking about, we're talking about just doing life with them like Howard did with me. Do life with them together. And then when they're excited, um, get them to pick three more. That model has been fantastic. So we're doing it here, and it's been working tremendously. So what I'm getting ready to do is now is teach people how to do it in their communities. We call it Pick, Stick, Invite, and Excite, Brothers Keepers Model for Discipleship. And the thing is, you may work with that, those three guys for two years, they may not ever step a foot in the church, but you still have an influence on them. I told you, Howard didn't invite me to church. He didn't open the Bible in front of me. He didn't do that. What he did is he invited me into his life to see it, and I wanted to be part of it. 
So I have three guys. Well, I have more than three guys, but I tell them a minimum of just three. I tell them anybody can handle three. And now imagine if the churches did this. Every man in your church, not many men in church, but if every man went and hit three and inspired those three to get three, guess what? You'll have more men in church than women. But we don't do that as a church. And to let your listeners know that not all is lost. One of the guys I interviewed on my podcast, his name is Jim Brown. He's a pastor up in um, Goshen, Indiana. He started a church. He has um, 2,400 members in his congregation, 1,500 are men. Jimmy, 1,500 are men. And check this out, Latanya. This is going to blow your mind. You know how you have you've seen children ministries at the churches, right? Yeah. And children, you always see the women go with the little babies and the three-year-old, two-year-old. They have a children ministry at their church. They have over 200 male volunteers. We can probably get three at our church. <laughs> they have t- over 200 males volunteering, not with the youth ministry. I'm talking about with the children. I'm talking about children, elementary school age down to the nursery, over 200 men. So you know after I had on my show, I'm getting ready to take a group of my men, and we're going to visit them at his church just to be around um, Jim to see what he's doing so we can bring that mentality back to Chattanooga. So a lot of things I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of things locally, but trying to model it so I can teach it, people how to do it nationally. Awesome. I love it. So how can our listeners find out more of, about you guys, about more about what you're doing, and just stay connected? Okay. Well, I'm going to give you three ways. Um, when when they, anybody asked me, they said, Joe, um, where would you suggest a man get started? What should he do? And women can help the men get started in these areas. I said, one, the, the biggest problem, the biggest obstacle for us men is to get help. We're afraid to ask for help. That was my problem. I had an ego problem because I felt so successful, I didn't need anybody telling me how to do this. So we have to humble ourselves. So one, I tell men, you have to get help. Now, what I've done to help men get the help they need without actually opening their mouth is I sent them to a, a web page that they can get two of my books for free, okay? One is called Are You the Man? 201 Lessons I Wish My Dad Would Have Taught Me, <laughs> okay? And the other one is called The Real Man Spiritual Leader Blueprint. 21 Practical Ways to um, Lead, Love, and Love Your Family. Now, if any man who says, I don't know where to start, have him go to this website, and, we'll, and I'll send you an email so you can add it to your show notes or whatever, Latanya, but it's rmcfree.com. R-M-C, for Real Men Connect, rmcfree, F-R-E-E, dot com. And they can, get, they can download those books immediately. I mean, it's an electronic version of it. So that's to get them the help to get them started. Now, if they read that stuff, what's more than likely is going to happen, they'll be ready for the next step, which is to get connected, okay? Then they'll know they'll probably want to go to our website, realmenconnect.com, because there we have all these articles, we have the interviews, we have devotionals, we have resources for men, programs that's happening all over the country, all kinds of things that men can get plugged into. So we get them connected. They get help one, then they get connected, and then the last thing is they need to stay connected. And the way they can stay connected, my resource for that is our podcast on iTunes. I'm telling you, Latanya, and I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> when I launched the thing, I was saying, I'm going to help a lot of men out there. This is going to be a blessing to them. I ain't going to even lie to you. And I don't care if anybody listens to that thing. I do it because I want to do it now. <laughs> I just love it. I'm just, I'm just being honest. I, I don't care if no one ever listens to that thing. I love interviewing great men. I love it, Latanya. I love it. My wife loves it. I love it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, but that's my way of staying connected because, you know, I run to a lot of busters too, a lot of guys who don't get it, right? And they get, and I get frustrated thinking, these guys don't have a clue. And then I feel like, man, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to give up. These guys don't care. And then I interview a great man, and then I get all fired up to do it all over. <laughs> so, so if anything, awesome. I realize now that the Real Men Connect podcast was sent to me to be a blessing, but I wanted to bless everybody else. So, those three steps, to get the help they need, get connected, and then stay connected. And we have the resources to help them do that. Wow. Listen, Joe, I'm going to have to have you back, back on, on again, and, and we're going to really dig into, dig into some of these things. Uh, thank you so much again for being here, guys. It's Joe Martin. He is the founder and creator of Real Men Connect. I encourage everyone to go to realmenconnect.com also and listen to the podcast. Well, I'm your host, Latanya Moore. This is Real Perspectives, where we seek real people with real issues and real solutions from real perspectives.